Hi guys, my crew here. This is my loot from 100 hours of Spiritual Warriors in a personal Slayer dungeon. These are AFK, very, very easy, and 5 mil GP an hour. These are very, very underrated, and I'd highly advise doing them if you're going to AFK something for some XP and some GP. I know this is a loot video, but I wanted to make it into somewhat of a guide as well. So if you're only interested in the loot and seeing the price check and then the loot breakdown at the end, I'll leave a timestamp in the description that you can click to skip past all of the setup and everything like that, as I do talk quite a while about the gear setup. So let's get right into the video. Starting off with the gear setups, this is my AFK gear setup. This is for if you want to be super lazy and you barely look at the screen, you come back every like two minutes, loot your stuff and then go back to AFK. And this is what I did because I'm playing on multiple accounts at once. I did my 100 hours while doing all of the Nubaru series stuff, so it was very AFK on my other monitor. If you take a look at the gear setup, I have Ghost Hunter goggles, as every piece of Ghost Hunter does 3% more damage and gives you 3% more experience from killing the ghosts. Spiritual Warriors are ghosts and it works really really well with those. One piece of Ghost Hunter is 3%, two pieces 6% and three pieces 10%. Other helpful things are stuff like Vampirism Aura as it can help make it super AFK and the Blood Amulet pretty much keeps you up all the time and you don't even need Soul Split or anything. But for the times where the Amulet may not keep you up, something like a Vampirism Aura just secures that. You don't need it by any means though, it's just a helpful little thing. Then just take the best cape you got, take a rune pouch, fill that rune pouch up with air runes for your spell and then alk runes as well, which is fire and nature. Then I take anima core of seren, chest and legs, unaugmented. I don't augment them because it adds quite a lot onto the charge drain rate. And I don't really need the augments too badly because you can deal so much damage and they have so little HP anyway. It doesn't speed up your kills drastically. But if you do want to deal a bit more damage and kill them a little bit faster, you can augment it at the extra cost. The reason why I take Anima Core is because if you take God Wars Dungeon 1 armors or Nex armors or anything like that, they aren't aggressive to you and you need to use aggro pots. Aggro pots aren't as effective because when they respawn, they instantly aggro on you if you're not wearing any of the God Wars Dungeon items. Whereas if they respawn and an aggro pot has to pick them up, it can take a little while for those aggro pots to pick them up, especially if they're spawning very, very quickly and you're AoEing down like three at once and they all die. When those three respawn, they'll instantly come on you but if you're using an aggro pot, it will have to pick them up one by one. So Anima Core of Seren isn't a God Wars Dungeon 1 item, so all of those different spiritual warriors will still attack you. This is also why I use Lunar Boots. It's the best DPS boots to use that isn't God Wars Dungeon 1 or higher, because if you use God Wars Dungeon 1 or Nex armors, they won't attack you even if it's just your boots. And then you don't want to use tank boots or tier 90 boots or anything like that here, so Lunas are pretty much the best. Every 15 minutes or so, they will stop being aggressive to you, a lot like in the Abyss. So in order to prevent this or make them aggressive again, just leave through the barrier, go over to the archway, exit the dungeon, and then you can just right click and re-enter the dungeon and they'll be aggressive again. When it comes to gloves, Cinderbane's a king here. You can poison them, they're hybrid, they're really nice. They're tier 85, just all round great gloves. And then I use the Luck of the Dwarves. I'm not 100% sure if the Luck of the Dwarves works here. I do get rare drop table drops from the Spiritual Warriors, but it never ever procs my ring. So I don't know whether the ring actually has any effect, but I wear it just in case. When it comes to your amulet, use of the Blood Amulet of Fury, keeps your HP topped up and you don't even need Soul Split. When it comes to your weapon, you can use an Obliteration Staff, a Nox Staff, whatever you want. These don't really have much HP, so even stuff like an obliteration is really, really good here. And even if you put something like scavenging on your weapon and you buy a cheap weapon like obliteration just for this, it can actually be quite beneficial. When it comes to the inventory, I have one noted item of everything that gets noted. The Rock Tower and the Runite Ore are there from the Looting perk, so I can note those whenever I get them from my Scavenging and Looting perk. Then you use the note paper for the items like the Super Pots and the Addy Two-Handers. The Spring Cleaner breaks down most of the rune items, but you've got Alk runes for the rune items, it doesn't break down. I have a herbicide in my inventory, that's the only thing I don't have on my tool belt. I do have other things on my tool belt, like the gold accumulator that's used here. So if there's anything that you want to take that obviously you haven't got tool belted, like the gold accumulator, put that in your inventory instead. The normal unattuned ectoplasmator can give you prayer XP while you're here. The prayer XP adds up in the long run if you're going to do it over a long period of time, so I'd advise bringing the Ectoplasmator. I take a gem bag because they do drop some gems here and there. They don't drop tons, but it adds up. Then you just take like a Holy Overload or two, and the last thing you can choose from is either a Teleport to House tab 
or the Slayer Codex if you have 50 souls. If you have 50 souls, you can teleport straight to the Sunken Pyramid with your Slayer Codex, so you can take that. If you don't have 50 souls, teleport to your house and have it situated in Menaphos. The house portal in Menaphos is right next to the guy you travel with. Then the only other extra things is I use a legendary pet to help pick up my loot and Karamin perk can help quite a lot with chain here as well because you have a maximum of 5, Karamin can hit every single one. That's it for my AFK gear setup, the active gear setup is very similar so it won't take me too long to explain that so I'll quickly go into that one. When it comes to the less AFK gear setup, you don't use a blood amulet of fury and you have to use soul split here and there to keep your HP topped up or you can pick up the sharks on the floor that they drop and eat those. And because you have to put soul split up here and there or eat some food it just makes it less afk and you have to tab in a little bit more often it's still pretty afk though and i still don't take any augmented items except for my weapon what i take instead is free piece ghost hunter which is the helm the chest and the legs like i said previously each piece of ghost hunter gives three percent more experience and damage and ten percent for the free piece so if i'm wearing the helm the top and the legs i'm getting ten percent more experience ten percent more damage and ten percent more accuracy the ten percent accuracy doesn't really matter here the damage is what you really really want Doing 10% more damage adds up to being way more than the bonuses in magic that the top of the legs would give, although it does give less armor, which again is another reason why this is less AFK. The salve amulet is 20% more damage as well, so that added with the ghost hunter is 30% more damage. It really really adds up well and these die so quickly with a setup like this. But again, it's a bit less AFK, you can't just 100% AFK only tab in to loot, you do need to sort out your HP and stuff here and there. So it's up to you, you choose what you would rather do, you can get some more XP and GP doing it this way, or you can go the 100% AFK method if you're doing a lot of other stuff, or you want to focus 100% on other things. What makes these so AFK is using Revo++ to cast your thresholds and ultimates with magic. Magic has some really good AoE, so the clear times of these is super quick as well. If we quickly take a look at my Revo++ bar, I have Tsunami as number one. Tsunami is definitely your best ultimate. It does really high damage and clears multiple mobs at once, and then it gives you a buff for 30 seconds. Whenever you crit, you get more adrenaline. This then allows you to build up very easily to Sunshine right after. Because both Sunshine and Tsunami have 60 second cooldowns, this means you can cast them both whenever they're up every time. This maximizes your uptime on using ultimate abilities and then it just comes to all your basic AoEs that deal the rest of the damage. I put Chain as number 3 on my bar because I have Karomin. If you don't have that, move Chain to number 5. Then I have Corruption Blast and Dragon Breath. These two are really good to clear as well, both being really good AoE basics. The rest of my bar is pretty self-explanatory. I have Sonic Wave, I have Sacrifice, Wild Magic, Combust, Tusker's Wrath and Asphyxiate. To be honest, it doesn't even get far enough to ever cast Asphyxiate and I don't really want to cast something like that on Spiritual Warriors very often. They don't have tons of HP, so I only use that right at the end if really needs be. So yeah, that's my AFK Revo++ bar. Customize it however you want, if you have Karamin or not and things like that. But that's enough about the setup, about the way I do it. Let's get into the loot. As you can see from the price check, I made 526.9 mil, so near enough 527 mil in 100 hours of Spiritual Warriors. The things that make you the most amount of money are the Runite Ore from the Spring Cleaner and the pure GP you get in coin drops. I used a gold accumulator and it picked up all of the coins for me, so it does take a little tiny amount of those whenever it's picking it up for you, but it makes your life a lot easier and I made 92.7 mil in cash. Then I had 123 mil in Runite Ore. Even the other ores mount up 12 mil in Coal, 14 in Addy, 10 in Myth. And as we scroll down, we can see that we've made 30 mil in Super Strength, 16 in Super Defenses, 15 in Super Attacks. You don't make much money from the daggers and the swords because most of those get broke down and you're not left with too many actual raw ones. Whereas the Adamant two-handers that I know, I made nearly 40 mil from those and 82 mil from the Halberds. These rune halberds never get broke down and they out for 75k each. So I'm going to put those in my alcas afterwards and it's going to make me a lot of money. Same with the rune kite shields. There's 34 mil in those. I'll chuck those in my alcas as well alongside all the other rune items. And as we go down, things get less and less valuable except for this ghostly essence. It drops around 8 on average and I've got 2062 of it, 21 mil worth. Then we have loads of different gems that stack in our gem bag that we just empty in the bank here and there. 
we got some crystal keys and some loop halves and tooth halves and just other random rare drop table stuff. It all mounts up in the end, like even the room bars just getting free at a time. You get them fairly often, so I got over 100 of those. All in all, very good money for how AFK they are and how easy they are. And everything on this drop log pretty much can't be crashed. You can't really crash ores, you can't really crash pots and things like that. So it's always going to maintain a good like 4 mil profit or something. Finishing this video off with the XP and GP rates of the Spiritual Warriors in the Personal Slayer Dungeon. The method I used was the AFK method with the Blood Amulet of Fury and only one piece of Ghost Hunter. I got around 500,000 magic experience an hour and 163,000 constitution experience an hour. This made over 650k combat XP an hour which is really really good for how AFK and easy they are. My average GP an hour was 5.27 mil. Taking away the cost for springs and a bit of charge and stuff, this is around 4.8 million GP profit after costs. So in total I made 526,944,722 GP, so pretty much 527 mil. This then made 480 mil pure profit for these 100 hours. So these being nearly 5 mil GP pure profit every hour and being super AFK only having to tab in every 2 minutes to loot is absolutely insane. Either way, that's it for this video. Hope you did enjoy it. Give it a like if you did enjoy it. Subscribe if you're new for loads of future content all related to RuneScape 3. And until next time, see ya.